Hello guys, Asian Game Plays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. Today I finally bring you this video and by finally I mean really finally because well these past days have been really really busy so I couldn't have uh, at least I could have worked a bit better but uh, well I need some time to rest also so whatever what I mean is today we finally have that video Ryzen 5 2600X versus Ryzen 5 3600 XT versus Ryzen 5 5600 X. The GPU used is the RX 5700 XT and yes I know I'm using medium settings because of that because uh, of trying to avoid the GPU bottleneck but these tests, these tests will be remade with my new RX 6800 XT or the 6800 that will be sent by AMD as so they've told me. Uh, they also sent they also sent the Ryzen 5 3600 XT, so thanks AMD for sending the, the product. Um, and well, the other two CPUs I bought them myself with my own money, and for that the sponsor of today's video helps a lot. Sponsoring today's video we have our monthly sponsor, GVG Mall, offering you a Windows 10 Pro serial key for only $17, and if you use my SKAG code, you get 20% off, lowering the price to $13. After the payment, you'll receive the key in no time and you simply need to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. So guys, without any further delays, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video and let's go to the testing. It's all about humanity. Well, since we have a CPU comparison video, our first game is the really CPU-dependent Assassin's Creed Odyssey. As for results, orange bars are stock and the black ones are OC results. At 1080p the differences are noticeable. In average, a Ryzen 5 2600X user going to Ryzen 5 5600X will benefit from over 20 average FPS in this game, and most importantly, also 20 FPS more in the 1% lows, raising the values from 49.1 to 66.1, both at stock. The 3rd gen Ryzen users will still get a decent 10 FPS boost in average, if they aren't GPU bottlenecked. Once we get GPU bottleneck like we see at 4K, well, the results will be more or less the same and within the margin of error. Let's move on. Now with Far Cry New Dawn, another CPU dependent title. The results are astonishing for Ryzen 5 5600X. As you saw in the previous side by side comparison, the 5600X gives a huge amount of FPS over the 3600XT in some scenarios, this while having way lower temperatures. At 1080p the difference is obvious and going from Ryzen 5 2600X to Ryzen 5 5600X is a major upgrade. Delivering a boost of over 30 average FPS and over 20 FPS more in the 1% lows, which for people having higher refresh rate panels will be a delight. At 4K we can see that around 60 FPS all CPUs perform the same, 
but if you aim for higher values, you definitely want to get at least the Ryzen 5 3600 XT. This time with a competitive game for a change, CSGO. Before anything, yeah, we all know that we don't have 500Hz monitors, but take in consideration that higher frame rates will give you lower frame times, which will deliver you a snappier and more responsive gameplay. Using the CSGO benchmark presented in the workshop, we get a pretty big boost with every new generation. A 1080p Ryzen 5 3600 XT delivers us around 70 70 average FPS more than the Ryzen 5 2600X and Ryzen 5 5600X delivers us 100 average FPS more over the 3600XT, which is massive. People going from Ryzen 5 2600X to 5600X will have a boost of 170 average FPS, which is nothing less than monstrous. And yeah, in some scenarios it will be even more. But well, overall if you're not aiming for competitive level, you are more than fine with any one of these three CPUs. This time we have a more GPU dependent title to see how these CPUs perform here, in Red Dead Redemption 2. I use the inbuilt benchmark to test and as you know, this benchmark is not 100% reliable, so take these results with a grain of salt. As for average results, we can see that all CPUs are able to deliver over 90 average FPS at 1080p with the RX 5700 XT. The most common issue here is the 1% lows, and it is where we can actually see a small gain for the Ryzen 5 5600X, from 5 to 7 FPS, which is not bad, but not anything that you should care about. Overall, all CPUs play this game well below 100 FPS. Now with The Division 2, one of the few well-optimized titles from Ubisoft. I love to test this game in terms of CPU power because it asks a lot from them, being in terms of core count or actually single core performance. At 1080p you can clearly see that we have a difference in terms of average FPS, but well, we're already above 170 and even the 5600X gives us only 20 average FPS more, but that's why I love to test this game. The biggest difference is in the 1% lows, and it is huge. With every new Horizon generation we get an FPS bump in the 1% lows, even though the average FPS numbers are close, and going from Ryzen 5 2600X to 5600X gives us 50 FPS more in the 1% lows, 50. And believe me, in terms of 1% lows, that's an astonishing difference, crazy indeed. But well, if you're not aiming to play this game at over 130 FPS, every single one of these three CPUs will be more than enough for you. Let's move on.
The last game with side-by-side -side comparisons is Rainbow Six Siege using the Vulcan API. And let me tell you that this game is really well optimized. I mean, even at over 300 FPS, we generally go into a GPU bottleneck, which is crazy good for a game looking this good. As you can see, even at 1080p medium, the only CPU that actually goes into a bottleneck is the Ryzen 5 2600X at stock. But still, impressive. Basically, any of these three CPUs can run this game perfectly at over 300 average FPS, and unless you aim for more than that, there is no need to upgrade at all. Father would kill me if he finds out I went up with you. Twice if he learns we've been to a Hansa off limit zone. Reaching the final line, we have Metro Exodus, using the X12 and testing in the early Moscow mission. This game isn't really CPU dependent, and that can be seen in the results. We also have a tendency where the stock values are usually a bit higher than the overclocked ones, at least in the 3rd and the 5th gen Ryzen CPUs. Overall, all CPUs can play this game pretty decently, and the only one that does fall behind a bit is the Ryzen 5 2600 at stock. But it also shrinks the difference when overclocked to 4.2 GHz, which is nice. The last game tested is one of my favorite games to benchmark, and it is Need for Speed Heat. I mean, this game is so badly optimized that it will literally tax everything. CPU, GPU and even RAM, so it is awesome to benchmark. As you can see at 1080p the results are incredible. We do have a decent bump from the 2nd to the 3rd generation, but the 5th generation gets things to another level. Even going from Ryzen 5 3600 XT to 5600 X, we have a difference of 25 average FPS when both are overclocked, which is nothing less than massive. Even at below 90 FPS, we can see how the CPU is really important for this game. And unless you are playing at 60 or maybe 75 Hz, I would consider getting the best CPU inside your budget. The last benchmarks are done in Cinebench R15 and R20. And I must say that we have pretty interesting results. As you can see, overclocking these CPUs gives almost no difference in terms of single core performance. But once we look at multi threading performance, things are different. In Cinebench R15, once we overclock the Ryzen 5 5600X to 4.7 GHz across all cores, we can surpass an overclocked Ryzen 7 2700X and match a stock Ryzen 7 3700X in terms of multi-threading performance, which is astonishing for a chip with two cores and four threads less. Although the biggest difference in terms of multi-threading performance was not from the 3rd to the 5th gen, sorry, but instead the 2nd to the 3rd, where we saw the multi-threading being done way more efficiently, and that was improved even more with the 5th gen. Basically, people considering a gaming machine a new gaming machine with a slight trend to multi-threading tasks like encoding, editing and some more will benefit going from Ryzen 5 5600X. Because, well, even though it has 6 cores and 12 threads, it performs well in every single case scenario. So, concluding guys, what do you think about the results? Well, in my opinion, it is quite simple. So basically, if you are aiming for, let's say, 60 or 75 Hz, well, you do not need to get a new CPU at all, unless you are looking for better multi-threading abilities. But for that, you can simply get, for example, the Ryzen 7 3700X or the Ryzen 7 2700X, which are great CPUs for multi-threading. So I don't see how you, you actually need to upgrade just because of gaming if you're gaming at 60 or 75 hertz. Now, if you game at more than that, let's say 80, 90, 120, 200, and 144, 240, well then you must look and you may need to look at other things, at other CPUs, and for that, while the 3600 XT is, 
is really really a good CPU for the price or it was at least since the prices actually increased a lot. I don't know if they are really worth getting right now. For example, you have the 5600X which is a lot a lot faster than the 3600XT even the XT version which is a better binned one uh, compared to the non-X and the X version. Um, and even then, even in that case scenario, the 5600X is completely, it's, it's, it's in a different league. So it does way more FPS than the 3600XT, um, while also being way colder. So the temperatures are way lower. There are no temperature spikes like we see in the third generation Ryzen's. What can you ask more? A better CPU? colder one with the same power consumption so if you are buying new i do advise getting you the 5600x or wait for the non-x version that will cost around 220 dollars and once again like i said if you play at 60 or 75 hertz if you have a monitor of 60 or 75 hertz or maybe a bit more than that um you just actually keep your cpu overclock it to the max possible, get a better GPU, because that's the most important for, for gaming, um, upgrade or use higher settings, so higher graphical settings or higher resolution, which in your case, since you have a 60 or 75 Hz monitor, is the best you can actually do. If you have a higher refresh rate panel, then the CPU is a thing that you may and you want to look into. Thanks a lot for watching. Also, you can grab these shirts, these awesome Evolution of Men shirts with the Evolution of Men and here the PC Master Race symbol, here the symbol of the channel and in the back you have the Illuminati symbol. So if you want to grab one of these shirts which are really really great, go to the link in the description and well, you get, on, you get an awesome shirt and you help the Ancient Gameplays channel, my channel and your channel. That's all for today guys, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video because that really helps a lot, really it does help a lot. <laughs> no seriously guys, it does help a lot. And well, see you in the next one. Seriously.